Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and this is module 5, Heredity. We're going to look uh, in the next four videos at a little kind of group um, that are under the general heading polypeptide synthesis. And this is the first one which is going to be an introduction to transcription and translation. What we need to be able to do is to model the processes of polypeptide synthesis including the processes of transcription and translation. Now, there's a couple of different aspects that we're going to be looking at under these general headings of transcription and translation. We're going to be looking specifically at the role of RNA and different types of RNA, and also the fact that we've got a message that we're trying to get from one place in the cell to another using a completely different type of code. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video is overview these two processes, and then we'll look at the specific types of uh, ribonucleic acids that are involved in this message uh, transfer uh, in the next of these videos. So what you should be able to do as you go through this, try and tick these things off. Firstly, the purpose uh, of polypeptide synthesis. Then you should be able to link the structure of the DNA to the structure of the polypeptide and maybe um, even model that process of uh, transcription and also translation. Uh, so here's a nice uh, quick overview then of the chemical structure of DNA. Now we need, do need to look at DNA uh, in comparison to RNA. And we've looked at a little bit previously about the general structure of uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. But we also need now to introduce this other type of nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid. And there are going to be a couple of minor differences, uh, both in the actual structure of the backbone itself, the fact that RNA is a single, not a double strand, and also um, that one of those nitrogenous bases is uracil or U rather than thymine or T. Um, but what we are going to be looking at here, I guess specifically, uh, not so much on the left side here, which is really all about DNA, but here, this um, flow of information from the DNA through to the RNA to the production of proteins. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. The first stage, and I guess to set the problem up for you, maybe to go back one step, um, what is the problem? The problem is that we have a molecule in the nucleus which contains all of the key information that we need. And that molecule we've now called DNA. And DNA is a very long molecule, a double-stranded helix, so a, a twisted staircase. And we know that the critical components of that is the sequence of bases uh, on the rungs of the ladder, if you like. And that sequence of bases and their complements, that is the, the uh, base pair that goes with each of those individual bases, is what is not only important to the integrity of the structure of DNA, but has also been very important in its replication. Now we're going to find that that code, that information, is also critically important in providing uh, information about the construction of polypeptides. Now, polypeptides are long chains of uh, amino acids, and they fold up to form proteins. So we're talking now about protein synthesis, or at least the formation of long chains of amino acids that form proteins after they uh, roll up into three-dimensional shapes. Now, that means we've got information in the nucleus in the form of nucleotide bases, and we want that information to be in the form of sequences of amino acids. So that's two different types of chemical um, structures, two different types of molecules. And so therefore, what we need to do is we need to go through two stages. We actually need to try and convert the information that is carried in um, nucleotides into um, amino acid sequences. That's what we're trying to do, uh, acid sequences. So we're trying to um, convert this information from nucleotide information to um, sequence. Now, of course, the problem with that uh, is that the information in the DNA is too big um, and too complex for us to just um, bring it all to the ribosome. So we know that the protein synthesis occurs in the ribosome, but the genetic information, the nucleic uh, acid 
the big um, sequence of nucleotides is in the nucleus. So we've got to get it out of the nucleus and we've got to take it to the ribosome. But we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and each chromosome probably has about a thousand genes on it. So you don't want all the information going to the ribosomes. They're not going to make 24,000 genes all at once, uh, proteins all at once. They are going to make specific ones. So we just want a specific part of one part of the DNA that is going to provide the information that we need in order to produce this particular protein. So we need two steps in this process. The first step we need is transcription. When you transcribe something, you are taking notes. Uh, you might even make a transcription of this particular video. Um, but there's also some guided notes in these slides to help you. But that's, that's transcribing. That's changing or taking down all the information you can in a language you understand. And that's one of the important things about transcription is we, we try and make a faithful copy of this information that's in a form that you can reread it and it'll make sense to you. That happens with a particular type of uh, molecule called messenger RNA. Now, the thing with RNA is RNA is a single strand of nucleic acid. It has um, the same sort of nucleotide units, that is a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. The bases are the same with one exception, that is we have uracil instead of thymine. But they pair up the same way. That is, um, the G's and the C's go together, but this time the U will go with the A. So if there is a T uh, in the DNA, then it'll link with an A on the mRNA strand. But if there's an A, it'll be a U. Uh, and of course, the G's and the C's are interchangeable, so that's fine. So we need to be able to... Um, unwind the DNA in the same sort of way that we were doing that when we were looking at DNA replication. And in the same way that we used a DNA polymerase to form a long chain of DNA that was basically um, part of copying the strands, we use RNA polymerase, which is an important um, enzyme, to produce that single strand that is reading the template Okay, so one of these is a sense strand or a template strand. And it's the one that gets read. And so that information is going to go from there. Now we, one of the things we know about DNA is if you know one side, you know the other. So if you know the sequence of bases on one strand of DNA, then you can infer what the other one is just using the base pair uh, partnering system. So what we've got to do is we've got to read the message first. We've got to take down all these letters in the correct order um, with no spaces from the beginning of the gene to the end of the gene. Now, we'll look in the next video at, at the fact that there's ways in which that can kind of happen. Um, and what you can see here, which is something that's slightly different to the process of DNA replication, even though some of these processes are similar, is that once the section of that um, DNA has been read and the RNA being produced has kind of gone past that area, the DNA behind will rewind. So... This isn't about producing two completely new strands, double strands of DNA. This is just about reading a little section in the middle. You kind of open it up and then close it back down again when you're done. The second part of this process is translation. Now, the problem is translation is usually a word we use when we're talking about languages. So when you, when you convert information from one language into another, then that's usually a translation. Can I understand... Um, what information I have in language A uh, in terms of language B. That's what we've got to do here. We've got to take information that's primarily um, in the language of the nitrogenous bases, and we've got to turn it into amino acids. And that's what happens in the ribosome. So in the ribosome, we have some ribosomal RNA. And again, we'll talk about that later on. We have our piece of messenger RNA, which has actually come out through the nuclear pores in the nucleus and through to the ribosome. And here we have these kind of cloverleaf structures. These are our transfer RNAs that kind of look a little bit like a T anyway. Um, and that kind of hopefully helps you remember. The thing with the transfer RNAs is they have two regions on them that are really important for our purposes. One region is a complementary region. So just as we have, uh, we talked about before, say, having a G 
uh, GG, let's keep it easy at this point in time, uh, sequence it maybe on the original DNA, and so therefore the messenger RNA is going to come out with a complement. If that section of DNA has um, a uh, C, 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 then it's going to be a G, G, G. In the transfer RNA sequence, it's going to bond at that particular site. Now, there's also reasons why we talk about this in uh, trios or triplets. Uh, but again, I'll leave that till the next um, video, although I'll just briefly introduce it in this one. The main th takeaway from this is that that is the translation point. So that code of three... Amino, uh, three um, nitrogenous bases codes for one amino acid. So three bases will give us one amino acid. And that amino acid is going to be added to the chain of amino acids that are going to produce our polypeptide, our many peptides. The bond between two amino acids is called a peptide bond, and that's where that... Um, polypeptide comes from. If you're doing chemistry, you'll understand a little bit more about a peptide bond when you look at uh, organic chemistry. Uh, but if you're not, the chemistry of that's not critical to your understanding of the biology. But this whole idea of um, complementing, of bonding together across these um, complementary base pairs and then coding for a particular amino acid. So different transfer RNAs have different sequences of uh, three bases, and therefore they also have a different amino acid. And so this is how the system knows exactly which amino acid to put into which place along this growing chain of polypeptide. Here's a bit of a table for you to give you a bit of an idea. Now, we will give you this information if we expect you to use this in an exam because it's just too complex for you to have to memorize yourself. And also, I'm sure you, um, well, you may already, uh, but you probably don't know what all these shorthand versions are for each of the different amino acids. And we'll look at them again a little bit more in the next video. But basically what we do is we look at three letter combinations. As I said, these are triplets or, or three sequences of three base pairs, and these three bases are going to code for one amino acid. Now, what you might also find is interesting in here is there's the AUG methionine, which is a green uh, color. There's a couple of things up here which are red stops, as well as the fact that there are certain amino acids that are com uh, coded for by multiple combinations of uh, base sequences. And all of this is building in uh, a little bit of inbuilt redundancy. It's a little bit of a protection against mutation, but it's also something that we're going to be looking at in a little bit more in uh, uh, later through this course. So what's the whole point of this? The point is modeling, and modeling can be done in a number of different ways. But what we're trying to do is show that where the messenger RNA strand is, if we've got a long messenger RNA strand, then that strand is going to have uh, all of the bases grouped together in threes. Each of those three is going to find a complement on a transfer RNA, and that transfer RNA is going to have a particular amino acid that is going to add to a growing chain of amino acids in order to form a polypeptide. There's a lot of stuff there, and we're going to go through a bit more in the next video. Thanks for watching.